Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. It's about 4.30 in the morning and we're taking the first sailing of the ferry to Vancouver Island. So I'm traveling with my parents. And it's Dudu's first ferry ride. He's still trying to figure out what's happening. The sunrise on the ferry was gorgeous, was super windy. But I spent about 15 minutes sketching the view outside the window. Here it is, and Dudu is having his breakfast right now. I think he's feeling better. And good morning, Nanaimo is our first time here on this part of Vancouver Island. Our first stop is Duncan. So this city is famous for their totem poles all around. This totem pole is the widest one in the world, made with a very old cedar tree. And I love the totem poles with eagles or ravens on top, wings spread out. And I decided to uh, sketch this plaza with uh, these totem poles in the middle and a flower bed in the front, heritage buildings behind. It's a lovely little place. So I'm beginning with the uh, first totem pole on the left side with the eagle on top. So yeah, it's actually pretty time consuming to draw all of these details, but um, it was fun. And then after the first poll, I'm trying to see the space on its left. So here I have one little tip for you. When you're doing an urban sketch, try to divide your sketch into multiple spaces. So here I am working on the space on the very left divided by this eagle totem pole, just focusing on all of these urban details on the left side of this totem pole with a pretty small space, easy to manage. And as you can see, I just drew a tree, um, traffic lights and signs, and the car right there, the foreshortened view of a car. Uh, there's a parking lot behind the railway underneath the tree. And another car obstructed by the tree there. And today I am drawing with my Sailor brand Feud fountain pen. Uh, with brown ink number 41 from Noodlers, and it's really fun. Uh, I think brown ink is really depicts the quality of heritage sites like this one really, really well. There's a sense of nostalgia uh, within the expression of brown ink and the organic feel of these lines. And um, yeah, so after drawing about those three cars over there, I'm adding more uh, urban details. So these are the, uh, the awnings of the, uh, the stores of the heritage buildings behind. And these uh, tiny little squares are the windows underneath the awnings. Yeah, so for now, I just want to focus on this uh, tiny little space on the left side of the eagle totem pole. Just uh, fill in this space with as many um, essential details as I observe, as I feel that's pretty important to define the uh, cityscape of Duncan. So yeah, keep drawing more awnings on the uh, second floor, adding a bit of accentuation with harder pressure of uh, holding the fountain pen. Now I am drawing the contour outline of the top of this building over here, which is pretty interesting. There's a dent here in the middle. So I'm always using the uh, eagle totem pole as a ruler uh, to align the different elements of this building. For example, the top of the roof and those awnings in relationship to the different parts of the eagle totem pole. So this is another tip for you uh, uh, for urban sketching. So you need to start with a large foreground element that acts as a ruler for you to know how to align the other um, urban structures behind or around it. And now I just drew a couple more totem poles uh, behind the eagle one. So there's a different horizontal uh, alignment lines with these totem poles. They're not standing on the same horizontal level. Uh, the two in the middle, they're slightly behind. And now I have more spaces in between these totem poles to fill. I want to tackle one gap at a time. So now I'm doing this gap over here. Just uh, in between, I see foliage. So just kind of relax and just do the contour outline of this tree here. A horizontal line that shows the top of another heritage building. And then a pretty big tree behind 
uh, that heritage building. So just connecting one thing after another. And this large tree is going downwards towards the left, uh, almost touching uh, another, like a raven totem pole over there. And adding some refinement for this uh, tree here. And here I am continuing to add uh, more details for this heritage building, window panels. And here, this is the sign of the railway. As you can see, the, uh, the crossing bars. And for many of these window panels, I see medium and small rectangles and squares. Most of them are very much like solid black. So I'm just using my pen to fill in those shapes to give more a sense of space for these buildings and weight. Now, just connecting the, uh, the railway track bars and another heritage building on the right side of this uh, human figure totem pole. Uh, there's a tent over here. I think they're going to have a concert. I actually stole a chair from this concert setup uh, to sit over here and sketch the view of this plaza. I'm going to return the chair after I'm done. And now adding more trees behind the tents. And it's so much fun drawing with a uh, food style fountain pen that the nib is actually a little bit bent. So we can create a variety of line weights with various hand pressure and holding this pen uh, in different angles. Um, yeah, okay, so now adding more foliage outlines and these little vertical lines of lamp posts. So I found these vertical lines of heavier weight it gives a really nice sense of balance for an urban sketch. And now I am moving on to this little gap between the eagle and the raven totem pole to add these branches and twigs of a tree that is showing pretty clearly um, in front of the canopy and more branches and twigs. So for most trees, the branches and twigs, they are very rarely straight lines. A lot of them are like bending uh, this way and that way in a really organic, natural way. Yeah, keep adding more and then drawing the contour outline of this tree's canopy. Bit of uh, foliage texture for the middle in between the branches and twigs as well. Continuing here for the top of the canopy. Just taking my time to do it. And when we're drawing trees and bushes, we don't have to um, add way too many uh, texture lines in the middle of the canopy. Just draw as many as you can and leave the rest blank for the viewers to imagine. Now I'm using these super loose, kind of almost scribbly lines to draw the leaves and flower petals of this uh, flower bed area surrounding the totem poles and these signs showing you the different names and descriptions and the artists who carved these totem poles. And now it's time to paint watercolors, starting with the sky area using cerulean blue. I also mix in a tiny bit of green because the sky uh, sometimes has a bit of a turquoise tone, especially from the middle to the bottom area and using horizontal brush strokes to, re to create a really nice turbulence for uh, the sky. And now I'm painting the first layer for the grassy areas using lime green, mix it with a bit of um, lemon yellow. It's a bright sunny day and this yellow green color shows the shine really well. And same for the first layer of these trees in between the totem poles behind. Yeah, it's the same recipe. It's a mix of lemon yellow and lime green really depending on your taste and also your observation as well. Some areas might contain more lemon yellow, where other areas might contain more ratio of lime green. And using these loose and choppy brush strokes, creating a slight bit of relief of brush marks uh, to further depict the texture of leaves. And without much hesitation, I am doing wet onto wet, another kind of green. So this is very much lime green mixed with a little bit of hooker's green, super refreshing uh, kind of medium green. 
mostly around the middle to the bottom part of these tree canopies. Uh, because this is how nature works. Most of the, uh, the mid and dark towns of trees and bushes are usually around the middle to the bottom part. And um, most trees and bushes, they are spherical in very random shapes. Okay, and now I am adding more uh, like higher ratios of hooker screen here and there as I observe. And I found a lot of trees um, far in the background usually has a pretty dark value of green compared to the ones in the middle and foreground. So just adding that, playing with at least two or three different values of greens dancing together. And now I still have a lot of trees and leaves to paint in, so just keep it simple by playing with two or three different levels of greens, starting with yellow green and then hooker's green from the middle to the bottom part of each tree. And I always like to use wet onto wet watercolor technique to paint my trees and other foliage areas. My brushstroke is a little bit chunky, as you can see, uh, to create a sense of relief of brush marks. And some more yellow green mixed with a bit of a uh, hooker's green for this tree here on the right hand side. Green is a very healing color. It's very refreshing to look at for our eyes. And when I'm blending these greens together, I very rarely keep stirring in the area, trying to make a perfect blend. As you can see, as I'm adding this mid green over here, just quickly punch it on and just let go. Move on to another area to add some more contrast. And don't forget the negative spaces in between the tents over here. So again, quick punches of green brush marks. So I'm trying to keep every single brush mark of a different um, shape uh, made with different hand pressure. And another little tip for you on urban sketching um, is about saving time. Um, so I like to paint areas with the same color scheme first, in this case the green foliage. Um, so I'm going to get these greens done first before moving on to the browns, reds, and yellows, and blues. So there are a lot of benefits of um, this method. Uh, the first thing is that it really saves a lot of uh, water in the water brush without constantly cleaning the tip and switching to another color. Just to get these greens done without squeezing the water brush to clean it a lot. Um, uh, a second thing is about keeping the colors really clean, all right? And now I just cleaned my brush tip. Now I'm moving on to a very different color. It's this red brown of the heritage building here on the left side. So I just simply mix uh, red with a bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of water control to get slight different values of that same red brown color. And now I am seeing this area of this heritage building over here having very, very much the same red brown color. So I'm just doing that before switching to a very different color. And the uh, direction signs over there, yeah, it has two pieces of brown bars. Now I am painting the first layer of these totem poles. So just simply wetting uh, these areas with clear water. Uh, the ink I'm using is not 100% waterproof. It's actually dissolved a little bit, but the lines are staying very solid. Yeah, so just a quick watery wash for these totem poles and some more yellow oranges for these heritage buildings and um, cobalt blue for the awnings over here. And uh, more blue window panels. Now I'm coming back to these foliage areas to add even more contrast especially for the bottom areas of the canopies. So I am adding hooker screen, mixing with a little bit of burnt sienna. So I like to use burnt sienna to shade my greens. 
Yeah, and same for this tree here in the middle. It needs more contrast for this sketch to look more powerful. Yeah, just very quick um, dashes of brush strokes. Maybe a little bit higher than the middle, really depending on the lighting condition. It's so satisfying to paint these different levels of greens. When I'm doing urban sketching, as I always mentioned in my other videos, I love to include foliage in my urban sketches because they just add so much uh, fresh vibe to a dry urban sketching, you know, for buildings. So I very rarely just sketch buildings only. I always like to incorporate uh, plants such as trees, bushes, and shrubs in my urban sketches. And now, as I mentioned before earlier in this video, uh, trees in the very back, they uh, most of the time they tend to have a pretty dark shaded green color, probably caused by overlapping. And I mixed this shade color by adding even more burnt sienna into Hooker's Green. And also not way too much water just to keep this uh, shaded green very dense and compelling. Yeah, just kind of uh, punching these dotting brush marks around the contour outline of that tree in front of it. Yeah, trying to vary my uh, hand pressure to get these different shape dots. And another tip on painting watercolors for you is that you need to um, reload your brush once a while otherwise you're working with a very thirsty brush that could soak up um, the vibrant and strong colors that you put on before okay so reloading your brush once a while depending on how strong that you want your colors to be is very very important otherwise you're actually soaking colors away from the previous layer yeah okay and keep using this strong green shade for the bottom part of this tray here on the on the right hand side. Always trying to um, keep a good balance of uh, many levels of green over here, not over painting. So sometimes I see um, people trying to learn how to paint watercolors is that they tend to use very random brush marks and covering a very large area. Um, some areas they should be left of a lighter value of the previous layer untouched. And now I, am, um, I just cleaned my brush, make sure it's all clean before switching to a very different color. Um, adding a stronger tone of red brown for this building here. I don't remember why I painted it was a very light tone earlier for this painting stage. Okay, so now and then clean my brush, come back to uh, add more shades of green for the lawn area surrounding the totem poles. Again, using these, uh, merging these choppy brush strokes together to depict that these are leaves, uh, the shadows of the leaf clusters projected onto the lawn area. Okay, so after dealing with the uh, urban landscape behind the totem poles, now it's time to have fun pinning in these vibrant colors of the totem poles, starting with the yellow for the uh, eagle's beak and that raven's beak as well, and the reds of the lips and other little spots here and there, trying to use the same color at a time. And um, I'm adding a bit of sepia shade for the left side of these totem poles, um, cleaning my brush and just start dragging this brown a little bit towards the right, uh, just so it's blending with the, uh, the super watery value of brown. And these totem poles, as you can see, they are cylinders with different areas of you know, reliefs, carved out areas, bulging areas, but in general, they are, uh, their, their prototypes are cylinders. And the sun was on the right, so the left side of these totem poles are pretty much shaded, yeah, depending on their 3D shape as well. So most of these, the left side uh, is shaded. After that, I'm adding some more red magenta-ish color, quick punches of brush marks to paint these flowers here in the foreground, very loosely. And um, these reds are actually adding a really nice balance as well as the red 
uh, areas on the totem poles. It's adding a really nice sense of balance and, and harmony with the greens of the foliage. Yeah, just having fun, adding this warm red here and there. And using the leftover blues to paint these information signs and add slight bit of contrast for this eagle, uh, totem pole, and also around the wings, just so the wing of the eagle looks more pop-up. Same for other areas. And a bit of shadow, right wrapping around the bottom edge. And just taking a couple more minutes to add some final polish, mostly grays for the white objects. For example, the tents and the areas in between different values. That's it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for amazing updates every week with several new videos. I've been traveling a lot on Vancouver Island these days and filmed tons of videos. So stay tuned for the next one coming up in the next couple of days, sketching at the harbor of Nanaimo in the evening. And I'll see you again very soon, everyone. Have a great day.